Hello everyone, it's the Farmsome Guy here. Hope you're all doing well. Now, about a year ago, I put a video out talking about my favourite 20 mods in FS22 so far. Now, bearing in mind the game was relatively new at that time, and we were still seeing a lot of mods coming out on a regular basis, I thought I would revisit that video. It was very popular, it's gone over half a million views so far, so clearly you guys like it, so let's jump in and have a look at what else has come out for Farm Sim 22 in the last little while. Now, I'm going to caveat this very quickly with these are some, just some of my favourite mods, not all of my favourite mods. Uh, some of them are things that we saw in FS19 that have come back for FS22. Some of them are completely brand new mods. Now, I've specifically avoided any kind of vehicle. No cars, no trucks, no implements, no combines, no tractors, whatever you can think of. These are all, I would say, either quality of life mods, things that make the game better, or make the game more realistic, or a mixture of the two. Now, I do have to caveat it up front. These are all PC-only mods. Unfortunately, there's nothing I or Giants can do about Sony and Microsoft's policy on third-party scripts, so we are where we are with that. But that doesn't stop you PC players of Farming Simulator enjoy these fabulous mods that these modders have come up with over the last 12 months or so. So, without further ado, let's jump in and have a look at 22 of my favourite mods in Farming Simulator 22. So first up, mod number one, we have additional field info by Yumi. Now what this does, you can see down there in the bottom right hand corner, a lot of additional info that is now in that panel when you are in a field. So now you can see the area of each field in the current land, the current land area, price per hectare of the cultivated area on land you don't own as well, which is very helpful, and the potential harvest quality and yield on ready to harvest fields. So lots of useful and helpful information to help you get more info on the crops on your fields and also find out how big fields are that maybe you want to buy and don't own. A very simple mod, but really, really helpful. That's additional field info by Yumi. Mod number two is an absolute classic, and that is Easy Development Controls by GTX. Now, I am obviously a content creator for Farming Simulator content, and this is a godsend for me i have to say um so much stuff that you can do here to help you set up games help you do different things in the game uh, it's such a such a brilliant set of tools and um let's jump in and have a look at it um everything from adding and removing money uh speeding up time scales you can pause the game you can turn flight mode on and the state of flight mode as well so you can switch it on and off using the j key the hud visibility which will hide things like your money and the time in the top corner and the map and things like that um teleport play this is one of the biggest changes in this version from fs19 you can jump to anywhere on the map so we're up at the moment at the farm here as you can see let's take ourselves down here and all you do is select and click and if i come back out of it we are here now at the bga look at that fantastic and again back into it map selection let's head back up to the farm now if you're in a vehicle you can teleport with the vehicle as well so if we jump in here there we go map selection Let's put ourselves slap bang in the middle of field 19 and it moves the tractor with us as well. If you have an implement attached, it takes the implement too. So really a nice bit of uh, a tool that can help you setting up uh, things in your field. So for example, we are in this field now as well and this is sorghum that's growing, but I don't want that anymore. So I can scroll down, there's lots of different ones, we'll go through some of these in a second, but let's, just as an example here, I can set the field fruit because it finds out where the player is, sees you in field 19 here, we'll have wheat. Let's have it at ready to harvest stage. You can set your fertilizer state, whether it's got weeds, whether it needs rolling. If you don't own the farmland, you can buy it. So you can say yes to that as well. Once you're happy with everything there, you can hit confirm, go back, 
go back to here and there you go a field of wheat all ready to be harvested just brilliant so let's run from the top now i've showed you a couple of so of the cooler things that I really like uh, things like setting quality uh, as well you can adjust your graphic settings here you can show the collectibles uh, let's go down to here super strength is available you can jump higher you can switch to third person view you can have wood cutting uh, running multipliers uh, if you're in uh, um, multiplayer you can set farms there lots of debug stuff you can turn on objects fill types so again you can spawn anything you want really here you can even fill up things like silos so tip to trigger if you're standing over a trigger you can uh, uh, you can fill up that uh, silo from there as well but for example let's tip to ground in a one meter radius. let's in a four in a five meter radius let's tip a million liters of wheat and there you go. Let's go back. Not sure that's a million. Actually, that could be 100,000. But there's a lot of wheat there. Put it that way. Um, so you can spawn crops in. You can spawn bales in as well. So I would like a few small square bales. There we go. Very nicely done. You can select which sort of bales there are as well. So really really cool anything you want it's so helpful for setting up a farm especially like i said for me who makes videos it's a godsend because you can set up everything before you start your game uh, beyond that you've got the options here to uh, reload vehicles i am obviously not in my vehicle so it isn't doing anything here but you can set the condition of the dirt you can refuel it you can fill vehicles as well so if you've got a for example a planter or a cedar you can set the fill level of that so we can put um or necessary seed or fertilizer or whatever you want in there so much stuff that can be done again placeables you can look at the, uh, production points uh, see where they all are so there you go the ones that are already on the map you can see those um, you can remove them if you want so much flexibility here this is the farmlands one that I showed you so you can set field fruit which we've just done set field ground as well uh, you can set the farmers uh, the owner of all the farmland as well so you can do it by field we can do farmlands as well. Um, play with the weather. So we're in August now. Let's jump to December. Uh, it says, are you sure you want to go that far? You can set the weather as well. Look, let's do some snow. And there we go. It's snowing. You've had enough of all that. Reload your weather. Reload your environment. And there you go. Back to normal. So 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 many brilliant brilliant tools if you don't have this i strongly advise getting it that's easy development controls from gtx phenomenal mod next up is universal auto load by loki 79 this for me is one of the most versatile auto loading scripts that we have in the game and it pretty much works with everything he's continually updating this he's very very active and making sure that this stays prominent in the game and is helpful as it can be to people but as you can see here as we roll up to three different palettes here i've got left shift r as my command i'm going to hit that now and as you can see we have got three pallets added to the trailer it will take like i said anything and as you can see down there in the bottom right hand corner by the speedometer it also gives you all the details you need for how much you have got on your trailer now uh, i did a big video on this a little while ago it has changed slightly but most uh, uh, most of the time he's just adding different types of uh, pallet in and adding additional features in but it does take everything from the productions uh, plus all the base game stuff and it's a fantastic land literally fantastic mod there we go we've unloaded those there absolutely brilliant ready to go again now it does work with a lot of the base game uh, uh, trailers out of the box as well and he has been working with other modders to make sure that it's incorporated in some other mods as well so definitely do a double check but you can also uh, add this to mods by yourself using a little bit of coding so um, again if you're that way inclined you could pretty much have this on any trailer you want in the game so there you go check out my original video as i go into a lot more detail on that but that is universal auto load by loki 79 absolutely brilliant mod one of my favorite auto loaders in the game by a country mile now the next one is a, a very simple mod i'm sure it wasn't simple to make but uh, the results are very simple in terms of we have got 
rounder wrapped bales from Ola Holdor. Now, one of the things that Ola did when he came up with this mod was he was frustrated, I think, that the base game versions of round bales looked just too uniform. They looked uh, too cylindrical. Uh, they didn't have the lumps and bumps that you see in a bale. Uh, in real life. So he set himself the task of making the bales look more authentic and this is the result. I for one, having seen more round bales than I care to remember in my life, think this looks a hundred times better than the base game version. So um, a really really simple mod but kind of brings the authenticity to the game that I like. So um, there you go, rounder wrapped bales from Ola Holdo. Nice little touch. Next up, this is a staple that was in my mod folder all the way through FS19, so delighted to have it back for FS22, and that is fill level warning from LSM Sashen Farmer. And what this does is it warns you when your hopper is getting full. Um, you get an audible beep at certain levels and the beacon light will come on. Now, of course, if you're driving the combine like I am here, you can obviously see down in the bottom right hand corner how much you've got in. But if you're on multiplayer and you're playing with friends, they will be able to sit in their tractors on the other side of the field and wait for the beacon light to go on. And then they know that you are close to being ready to unload and can head over. So it's just a nice little mod. It just kind of gives you that audible warning and that visual warning that you are about to be full. Again, can come in very handy when you're using course play as well in single player. So if you're running a, a combine in course play and you're running a, a grain cart, you will be able to see when the combine is ready to go. So let's just give you a little bit of a demo of this, shall we? So we have got 49% in the tank at the moment and there you go we've just rolled over 50 and we got that rather nice audible beep telling us that we have just gone over 50 percent so we are sitting here on 78 percent in the hopper just rolled up to 79 percent i'm gonna have to turn here we should now get a second audible notification and hopefully a visual one at the same time so there we go uh, that will tell whoever's watching that we have hit 80% and there you go. You can just see the beacon flashing there and you obviously heard the bleep as well. So we are letting anybody who know who wants to come and unload us that we have got an 80% full hopper, which means it's time to head over. But um, this happens at combines in real life. It's a really nice uh, thing to see in the game and it's super super helpful so there you go that is fill level warning by lsm and Sashen farmer next up is a phenomenal mod i think this is one of the things i've been most impressed with in fs22 and that is relight from such sneak this is um a complete overhaul of the lighting system in fs22 has managed to capture a lot more detail not just in the environment but also the reflections on vehicles and things like that i did a, a very in-depth video on this way back when it first came out it has now been released as a standalone mod which makes it super easy to drop into any map and switch on as and when you see fit uh, this is the uh one of only two mods in this list that isn't available in the mod hub as well this is available directly from his itch.io page but um really vivid colors uh, mornings and evenings particularly look phenomenal with this mod so i strongly advise you go and look at my uh video my review video when it first came out uh, and go and download this one it's absolutely beautiful so that is relight from such sneak okay next up is a combo of four mods that i've rolled together now this is the only mod that was in the first video but i've brought it back because it's had some additional features added to it in the in the form of three additional mods so real dirt color is a brilliant mod that adds the color of the ground you are working on to your vehicle so as you can see here we're driving across a lime field and the more we drive the more we get lime on our vehicle now in the base game it would just stay as a brown mud but now you get it like this 
So, the other three mods that have been added now as well are uh, Real Dirt Fix, which means that you don't lose the white off your tyres or the colour off your tyres when you are uh, driving down the roads and things like that, as you wouldn't in real life. Um, in the base game, it would just clear any dirt or mud that was on the tyres straight away. So that is now sorted and will stay on your tractor until you wash it. Um, in addition to that, there is Real Dirt Colour Tracks as well which hopefully I'll be able to give you a little bit of a demo of here as well. If I can, if I drive into another field that doesn't have lime on it, we get lime tyres just for a little while though until they wear off. So it's a really nice touch that, like that again, just that attention to detail that makes me smile. And the third mod that we've added, Real Dirt Particles, gives you this lovely kicking up of dirt particles off the tractor wheels. So as you can see there, as you're moving about, it is throwing up lime or dirt or whatever is on the field as and when you do it. And of course, if you're doing something like um, silage work, you get very green, grassy type textures on your tires, on your tractor as well. So again, just a brilliant mod that brings a level of immersion and realism that just isn't there in the base game. So uh, a lovely addition, fantastic mods, all from Viper GTS 96, who does some absolutely beautiful mods. So there you go. If you want a little bit of uh, additional realism in the game, check out these mods, all available in the Mod Hub. Very nice. Okay, for our next mod, we are back in the Combine and we are checking out Cutter Fix from Vertex Float. Now, in the base game, if you fire up your header on your combine, it would automatically drop the header down for you to start combining. Now, obviously in reality, that isn't really what happens. And again, if you turn it off, it would automatically lift the header. What this does is separate those out so you can run your header and then use the V button or the V key to lower it and move away. And again, V to raise or lower even when it is running. So again, another super simple mod, but uh, having that control over your header, choosing when you raise and lower it, brilliantly helpful again. Um, obviously when the header is down, it runs at its operating speed in the field, which is a lot slower. If the header is up, you can move around. So if you need to get from one end of the field to the other to start a new uh, row, you don't have to power down your combine to do it. You can just lift your header by hand. So again, very simple mod, but just a great addition. Uh, just adds to uh, the level of uh, flexibility you have when you're combining. Great little mod. Right, we're back at our rather dirty tractor here for the next mod, which is Engine Starter from Mantrid. Now, uh, if, like me, you like to turn the automatic engine on and off, uh, off when you're playing the game, so um, you use the enter key to start and stop your engine. Uh, the warning signs that come up can be quite frustrating. So uh, I'm not sure if anybody else has this issue, but every time I jump into a tractor and want to pull away, it says you must start the engine first in huge writing across the screen. Uh, I, for one, find that very frustrating. So um, what this mod does uh, allows you to start your engine when you press the accelerator or your WASD key or whatever you use to uh, move your tractors. So uh, there you go, you get engine starting instead of that warning and you can move away. I didn't uh, use any ignition key or anything like that. And it's just set the engine uh, to on and allowed you to move away again. It also allows you to jump out the cab and leave the engine running as well. So. Uh, some nice control and flexibility within this mod. And we'll just jump into the menu here and you can see all of the flexibility that you can have here. So if you don't like to start your engine on throttle like I do, you can switch that off. Uh, quick start as well, the engine will start instantly so you can drive away immediately. Lots, uh, you can turn the warnings off as well, so you could say no there. Um, PTO starts with the engine, um, always allowed with the hydraulics, but again, so much flexibility here, so many different little parameters that you can change it really brings a level of uh, tweaking and tailoring to the game that's uh, really really great so that is engine starter from mantrid 
Next up is a really fun mod that I uh, was super excited about when it first came out. I had the pleasure of meeting uh, Vectorman while I was at FarmCon last year as well, and he's an incredibly intelligent guy who's coming up with some really great mod ideas. But the exhaust extension is our next mod, like I said, from Vectorman. And what this does, it adjusts the amount of exhaust that comes out when the tractor is under load. So as you can see here, We've got the engine ticking over and we've got a small amount of uh, exhaust gases coming out there. Now, if I apply the accelerator and pull away with this little cultivator, just watch what happens to the exhaust. So there you go. Under full load and under gear changes, you can see the tractor working a lot harder. And that's just reflected in what you can see there coming out of the exhaust pipe. So again, a simple mod but it just brings a, another level of detail to the game that I feel was maybe missing a little bit brings it a little bit more into a, a I guess a, a simulator space in terms of realism uh, and I for one am a big fan of that so great to see such a such a clever little mod being added to the game so uh, nice one vector man love this one the next mod, and we're going to stay in the tractor just to show you this one, is from the team at FSG Modding. So not only do they do brilliant mods, they've got a brilliant uh, taste in initials as well. They are nothing to do with me, and they are not affiliated in any way, and I'm not affiliated to them. We are, I guess, linked by our initials only. Uh, but some brilliant work from the guys at FSG Modding, and this is the brilliant dusty lands mod so as you can see here we have got a little bit of dust coming off this cultivator as we're pulling away but if i pull up the menu here you can see that you can adjust the dust scale now so using the left shift button and either your uh, full point and your comma there or the period key if you're in the us you can scale up your dust scale and as you do as you can see, you get more and more dust. It maxes out at three, um, but lots and lots of uh, scope within that, depending on the size of the machine and also depending on the, the uh, land type as well. So uh, fantastic mod again. In terms of realism, this really starts to bring it home. And it, it's nice that you can adjust it per different implement as well. If I jump into the menu just here, I can show you that. So there we are in the general settings now, Dusty Lands extension, adjust the dust scale. As we see, you can see that we were doing that with the, the keybinds, uh, but then it's individually adjusted for each one of the implements that you want as well. So you've got some real scope for adjustment and uh, detailing there, because let's be honest, you don't tend to get that much dust with balers, but you are likely to probably get a little bit more uh, dust when it comes to things like combines, uh, maybe mowers in the dry and things like that as well. So uh, really nice to see that level of adjustment and detail and flexibility. But there you go. That is the brilliant, brilliant Dusty Lands mod from FSG Modding. Next up, we have a very, very helpful mod. This is Least to Own from Bodzio. 528 and this is this is a godsend i don't know how we lasted so long in game without this but what this does is allow you to purchase machinery when you don't have enough money to buy it outright now let's give you a little uh demonstration of this we have ten thousand dollars that's all we have uh but i would love to buy this little fent at 162,000. but i can't because I don't have that much money. I have 10,000 and that is all. But if I hit lease, it gives you the choice here. So base costs per work day and per work hour. Do you want to lease it for 8262? So you can put a down payment down and then you have leased your tractor. Now, at any point, you can purchase that outright. Obviously, the longer you have it, the more your payments are, and they'll come off every day. But at any point, you can choose to purchase the tractor outright. Obviously, 
there is a premium attached to this because uh, you're buying it um, using loaned money. So actually, I think ultimately it's about between two and three percent more than you would pay in the store for it. But um, a really, really brilliant mod. So if you're starting out on a game and you uh, have a little uh, cash shortfall, but you still need equipment, this is a great way of doing it now very easy to get into a lot of debt very quickly and own a lot of machinery so you've got to keep up your payments so you've still got to have enough money in the bank to be able to do that but it's a really really great way of getting around the challenge if you want to play realistically and if you want to play without kind of adding money to the game or using any of the money cheats uh, this is a really great way of getting sometimes getting the equipment that you need to get you on in your game without breaking the bank now i should probably show you actually um in the store how you can buy the vehicle outright when you have either a enough money or if you want to hand it back but there we go it sits in leased items there we can double click into it um, and you have the option here to return it if you haven't got the money to pay for it or you can purchase it now what this will do is tell you how much is left on the purchase price now the longer you have it before buying it the smaller this number will be now um, obviously I don't have enough money to be able to purchase this now, so uh, I'm not going to be able to do that. But um, you can at any point purchase it, which is great. Uh, a fantastic mod, this. I really, really like it. So that is Least to Own by Bodzio528. Now the next mod we're going to look at is, on the, on the surface of it, a super, super simple mod. Um, it is from Viper GTS 96 who has already been mentioned with the Real Dirt uh, mods, but he has come up with Game Saver. Now what this does is allows you to save the game without having to go into the menu. So you know in the base game if you're playing the game and the auto save time is set to 15 minutes, it will only trigger it if you go into the menus now obviously uh, i don't have a save primed at the moment but uh, that's where you will get your spinny wheel and your save happening if you continue to play in the game it wouldn't save until you went into the menus now if i go to my game settings here now we can set our auto save just for the benefit of this we'll set it to five minutes um so that you can see but what will happen now is we go We'll save the game there. So that is what you would see usually when you go into the menu. We'll go back out. Now in five minutes, I will show you what happens. And it doesn't require us to go into the menus. Now, I want you to watch up in the right-hand corner. Because this is the only identifier that this um, has saved your game. Um, and you can just continue to play without knowing anything is going on. Um, which for me is a real bonus. There you go, autosave completed. It is as simple as that. And you wouldn't notice when you're playing the game at all. Uh, sometimes if you've got a big game or you're doing some pretty heavy duty stuff, you might get an ever so slight pause, but I'm talking less than you know half a second kind of thing. You barely notice it, but uh, it saves a lot of hassle of jumping into menus and having to save it that way. So for me, I think this is in terms of quality of life mods, this is right up there. That is Game Saver by Viper GTS 96. Next up is a return of a mod that I used a lot in FS19 and I am a big fan of, um, especially when you've got a lot of equipment. So here's the example. We are going to tab through all of these vehicles. As you can see there, quite a few now all I want to be able to do is tab through my tractors so uh, what I can do is go to my combine here press Control T now look down in the bottom right hand corner you will see that there is a little red circle with a line through it underneath just next to the reverse there that I'm switching on and off now every time you switch one of these on like so it will no longer be able to be tabbed to, so you'll have to head up to the farm and switch off if you want to get into that vehicle again. Let's do it again here. Let's do it again here. And let's do it again at our combine as well. So all that will happen now is I will tab through our newly leased tractor 
and our John Deere tractor. And that is it. If we want to uh, get into any of those other vehicles, we'll have to go up to the farm and climb in them before we can switch them off. So let's just do that. So here we are, up at the farm. And there are the vehicles that we switched park vehicle on on. Let's head over here. We can climb into it as you normally would. There we go. And as you can see down in the bottom corner there, park vehicle still switched on. Control T again to switch it off. And now we should be able to tab between our two tractors. But also our third vehicle again. So... Uh, a very helpful mod if you get sick and tired of tabbing through tractors when you've got too much kit. You can set the ones you want and leave the others just for as and when you need them. So, a uh, brilliant mod. Nice to see it back for FS22. That is Park Vehicle by Vertex Designs. Next up is a really simple but really helpful mod from Sven P. That is Crop Growth Stage info now you combine this with additional field info that we talked about earlier on in the vid you've got a really really great set of tools available to you so now if we look down in the bottom right hand corner again here you will see on the fourth line up from the top you've got growth stage and it says five out of six so it tells you that it's gone through five of the stages of growth so the next stage will be it fully grown and ready for harvest now what i like about this is it it pre-warns you basically how quickly it is before the harvest is going to arrive. And I think it works a lot better than the map method here, where you've got all of these different shades of green, but it's kind of difficult to necessarily work out what stage is what, because they are pretty close together. So um, obviously the darker ones, uh, you know they're closer to being ready, but uh, it doesn't give you the accuracy that this mod does. So there you go. Very simple mod but very, very handy indeed. That is growth stage info from Sven P. Next up, we have a really helpful mod. This is Snap Build from Falcor. And basically what this allows you to do is to be able to place your buildings, but they will snap to different angles. So I've got this set on 90 degree snapping so I know that all of my buildings, if I place them, will be next to each other. So as you can see there, and also I've set the grid as well, so um, you can line things up a lot more easily and they don't free flow like they did if you had just the base game options available to you. So there you go. Uh, very, very helpful little mod there for getting your farm all lined up perfectly and neat and tidy it's a really helpful mod now you do have adjustment too as you can see we've got snap build position and we've got snap build rotation here so if let's for example i switch snap build rotation to 30 and click another building it gives you rotations of 30 degrees rather than the 90 that i had on there before now I've got snapping off at the moment as well, but if I press C, what you actually have to do is uh, reselect the building for it to work. But you can see now, we've got the snapping on. Now if I do Alt 5 as well and bump this up to 5 pixels, again, reselect the building to reload it. You can see it snaps now a lot more than it did before. So all you've got to do is just remember to deselect the building and reselect it to get the changes to work. Now it makes sense to talk you through the following mod as well, which uh, as we're playing with buildings, it makes a lot of sense. Um, the next mod is Placeable Extended by LS Mod Company. Now this, as far as I can remember, and I'm sure somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, this was available in the mod hub, but it isn't there anymore. Um, but LS Mod Company do some fantastic mods and this is no different. So one of the challenges you have in the game 
in just the base game is you can't place some buildings very close to each other. Uh, it says that the other building is in the way or something stopping it from being built. Um, so this mod helps you get around that problem. So let's pick a different type of building. Let's pick something a little bit smaller here, shall we? Let's rotate this into position. Uh, but in the base game, you would want to maybe put it close enough to uh, another building to make things look neat and tidy. Uh, but it will give you the warning with this. If you really wanted to, you could overlap them. No, not that we want to do that, but just to show you the benefits of the building, there you go. Uh, you can actually overlap stuff. But um, that, that's a little bit of a silly one, obviously, because uh, you wouldn't ever want to do that. So let's just uh, switch our um, build snapping off slightly. Uh, let's get another building again. But there's every reason why potentially you would want to have a building right up close like that and um in the base game you wouldn't be able to do that but with this mod it allows you the flexibility to really butt buildings up against each other and use as much of the space as you humanly want to which is fantastic so that is placeable extended from ls mod company working in tandem in this example with snap build from falcor as well so uh, great tools really give you a little bit of flexibility when you are building your farms, which I know a lot of you like to do. Now, the penultimate mod we're going to look at in this vid is called Field Calculator from KR Softwares from LS Mod Company. Again, and this is a great tool. Now, one of the challenges, I think, with Farm Sim is knowing how much money you need to spend and how much quantity wise you need in terms of things like seed, fertilizer, lime, you name it, how much of it you're going to need for each of your fields. Well, you don't need to worry about that anymore because Field Calculator gives you all of that info. It adds another icon into the menus. So if I jump into here, there's our map. We are in the middle of field 14 here. And above that, you have got this little icon now if i click onto this there you go field calculator not only tells you the farm fields that you own um so 13 19 and 35 are ones that we own there but it tells you every single field on the map it tells you the size um lime how much lime you're going to need how much fertilizer you're going to need how much liquid fertilizer you're going to need herbicide manure slurry and digest it now down at the bottom here as well seed consume there you go for field 13 it's going to use 2436 liters of seed how good is that fantastic fantastic tool really helps you get your head around how much you need in terms of volume for your fields so if you want to know that information and have that at your fingertips go check out field calculator by chaos softwares from ls modding company and last but by no means least probably one of the mods i find myself using maybe more than any other mod in the game and that is better time scale by ras kielsen this is a, a brilliant tool um really really helpful actually it avoids me i can't remember the last time i actually hit sleep in game because it's easier to use this mod so obviously in the base game you can speed up time as you can see i'm going up a little bit at a time now so we're on five times here on 10 times now 15 30 60 120 i believe it goes up to 240 or 360 in game for fs22 now doesn't it well better time scale gives you so much more than that so there we go we're on a thousand we're on five thousand here twenty-five thousand. so you can really fly through days and nights at a pace which allows you to skip over things very quickly for your uh crop growth and things like that um, and it's just super helpful again just using the seven and eight keys on the keyboard to control it so uh, really really good now uh, in FS 19 there was a slight issue with this mod that if you did it over midnight it would sometimes impact your crops that isn't a thing in 22 or if it is I've certainly not experienced it yet so uh, a really super helpful tool that allows you 
real control over your timescales and things like that. And I am stopping it here at 7.37 on a January morning because, again, we're just having a little bit of a look at the beautiful light that the Realite mod has now given us uh, in the in-game lighting for FS22 as well. But there you go. 22 of my favourite mods in FS22. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found a new mod that maybe you didn't know about before. I would love to hear some of your favourite mods as well. I'm quite sure this isn't the last one of these videos I do because there are so many brilliant mods coming out uh, all of the time and hats off again. Uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again. The modders really are the lifeblood of this game and keep it going for years and years and years and the, the quality and the standard of some of the mods that we see that allow us to play this game even better and even longer are second to none so um thank you without you i'm sure i wouldn't be playing this uh, game as much as i am so uh hats off to every single one of you who creates mod for this game you are superstars um and on that note i will leave you to it I hope to see you again soon. I hope you find this useful. Uh, like I said, let me know in the comments what your favourite mods are or the mods that you can't live without. But for now, from me, the Farm Sim Guy, take care and I will see you again very soon. Bye for now.